Hello there, and welcome to uh, another tutorial by Tizoni and Eskimo here. I had noticed on another channel I used to have that I had a tutorial that was getting a little bit of attention, although that channel was not popular. And in fact, I don't even exactly remember which channel it was on now. But anyway, it was something that I think a lot of people want to know how to do once they start Blender. And uh, it's very simple if you know how to do it and I basically just need to show you once and you'll never forget it. What you'll notice here is I have my Raz character that you saw in my intro most likely and uh, in front of him is a dartboard and uh, funny thing next to him he has a dart. So what I want to show you how to do today is how to make a character pick up an object. And now if your character just needs to hold on to an object and never let go of it this will be even more easy for you but uh, I want to go a little bit further than that as well and show you how to make him pick something up and let it go and and whatnot so um, I have this brilliant animation already and I'll go ahead and turn off the uh, rig so you can actually see the animation and you can see just this absolutely amazing high polished animation that I got going. I mean, even his face, it's its not moving at all. And uh, I was testing this out earlier, which is why that dart just moved, but I can fix that. I need to take off the animation in this. Don't worry, I got this. I got this. Alright, now I'll even remove this as well. Okay. So back to showing that animation there. Uh, he looks at the dartboard, looks at the dart. He's going to pick up the dart and just throw it. Just like that. And so if you want it to be in his hand, what someone might try and do, say if they had just recently started Blender or something, is they might try and animate the object of the dart uh, to follow his hand uh, frame by frame. And I don't really even need to tell you why that's a horrible idea. But uh, what I'm going to do is show you a way to use parenting to pick up an object. And not only that, but do it in a way that you can control it and animate it. It's very simple. Under your properties menu here, if you guess what this is called, yes it is. Uh, you have the constraints tab, which looks like a little chain. And I'm going to click on the, the dart that I have here. And go ahead and give it a child of constraint. This child of constraint uh, is basically what it sounds like with as far as parenting goes. It becomes the child of something that you want it to parent to. And uh, so what that means is it'll follow an object, but you can animate it on its own. And that'll make more sense in a second. What I'm going to do is parent it to this armature for my character here. And because I selected an armature, it wants to know uh, a little bit more detail about what I'm asking for. And so it asks for a bone. And I'm going to choose... I want a finger on the left hand. I wasn't really planning on the animation too well at first. And so uh, I made him left-handed for the purposes of this dramatization. So on the left hand, I'm going to do his index finger. Let's do this. And as soon as you click a bone, you'll notice that your object goes flying away somewhere in some random direction. That's nothing to be worried about. All you have to do is click Select Inverse. And so now if I play the animation, you'll notice that every time that, that finger or the hand moves, the dart will move also, even though it has no keyframes whatsoever. And so if you wanted someone to hold like a sword or something and never let go of it, all you would have to do is place the sword in their hand and then just do this and he would forever hold on to it and you would never need to keyframe it. And uh, along with that you could animate the sword, the spin and whatnot. And uh, you also have more options over here such as how the parenting goes. You can tell it to, like I could turn off the rotation and it's like the inverse again and so now every time the finger rotates the dart won't. It'll only keep track of the location and scale. So you have lots of options here, and that applies for the other ones. Uh, sometimes you can use this in a really neat way. If you turn off the locations and just leave the, the rotation on, that can be kind of cool. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going a little bit too far into this. Uh, you don't really need this much information. Like I said, this is a very simple thing to do. And so uh, what I'm going to do now is actually move on to him picking the object up. There's also an influence bar, which say if the hand moved one blender unit in one direction, um, if the influence is set to one, it will completely follow that one blender unit in that same direction. But if you set it to 0.5 or so, wow, I did that perfectly, uh, it would only go half the blender unit when the other thing is moving. So the only sad part is you can't go over one, though, which I think would be a nice little feature, but I assume it'd probably get a little bit buggy. So what we need to do is the dart doesn't need to move until he actually puts his hand over it and grabs onto it. Because as of the moment, it only moves whenever he moves his hand at all. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the moment just before he was going to grab the dart. So I'll put this at zero for now. So he puts his hand over here, maybe a few frames back, right there. And then I'm going to go one frame before that and hold my mouse over this influence bar and press I. It might help if I had a screencast going, wouldn't it? I mean, I haven't really done much. I was just going through the timeline with the arrows and then I held my mouse over this and pressed I. And so that you'll see that this bar turned yellow, which means a keyframe has been added on this frame. And you can see it down here as well. And if I move to any other frame, this is green now, which means it is animated, but not there is no key on this particular frame. So this is the one where he picks it up. So I'm going to go ahead and fully influence it and add another keyframe. Go ahead and select inverse. So now if I play the animation back, he did the dart is not moving at all until I made those keyframes. Looks down at it and then grabs it and then all of a sudden it starts following what he's doing. And like I said, the animation is uh, very well polished and makes entire sense. I even took the time to um, halfway kind of think that I was going to move the fingers and then got bored. Uh, like I said, this is just for um, demonstration purposes. So when he picks up the dart, I'm going to go ahead and say, right around here, leave a keyframe on the dart. And that's not for how it's attached, it's just how the dimensions and locations and all this up here is saved. Because as moment they never change even though the dart is moving because it was parented. So I put a keyframe there so I can change these as well. And so by the time he flips his hand up to about here, I would like the dart to be facing the correct way, about like that. And then maybe move it up a little bit. Or something. Make it look like I care. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then I'll add another keyframe. So as he picks it up, flips it around, and throws it. And now, we want him to let go of it now. So as he throws it, I'm going to put another keyframe here to add a pause. Say right about here, he'd let go of it. So I'll go one frame back and put another keyframe on um, the influence bar over here. And then go to the next frame and say he lets go of it. Now, uh, the dart will go back to its original position, which I find a little bit annoying, but it makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at 100, or 1 at the moment. I'm going to do a Shift S, cursor to selected. And I'll put my 3D cursor right there. So then once I pull this back and I put an influence there, I'll go back one frame. Just go ahead and put a keyframe right here if I didn't already. This is the part that gets a little tricky and confusing. So now in this frame, I want its location to be at that 3D cursor. Uh, selection to cursor. And then I'll kind of have to flip it back the way it was. 
and go ahead and move it forward a bit and add another keyframe. So if we go back and just see how this looks, that's all right. And now I have complete control of the dart again. And let's say we get a bullseye. Let's go ahead and be that selfish. Gets it, say, four frames later or so. And even though this isn't a straight path whatsoever, let's go ahead and do it. Boop. I already missed. Place the dart inside the bullseye, just like that. And then keyframe. straight as narrow. An now if I turn off the rig again and deselect that and we can watch it one more time. Zoom in here. I could use the camera but meh. Alright. Pretty sweet, huh? And uh, now what you could even do after that is have him walk up to it and then pick up the dart again and walk back and maybe even throw it again. You could create some sort of cycling animation if you wanted. But um, I already showed you how to go ahead and pick something up and it would be the exact same process. And uh, I hope that you uh, found this tutorial helpful. That is how you pick stuff up and drop them. And another cool thing about this constraint is that you don't have to use an armature. What I've seen people do is even use empties and they'll mix things together. They'll create these complicated like puzzle-like rigs out of empties and objects and constraints and whatnot. And if you really take the time to think about it, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. I believe that there's also bone constraints like this, so that's kind of nice. And um yeah, it's really fun, helpful, and um, makes things much easier than meticulously animating the dart through the whole motion itself. It's much easier to just use this constraint. It's one of my best friends in Blender. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh hope it wasn't too long. I try and be informative, but it might be a little too informative. And uh, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you next time.